good whatever time of day it is. We're all over the shop this year, Dave, aren't we? All yes, over are. the shop. Good. It's afternoon, it'll be evening or morning or whenever you're listening to this. Welcome to the Sunday night breakdown. It's a Monday. We're just totally all over the shop this year. Yeah. Uh, but I think we'll be back to Sunday next week. So there is, yeah. so there is that. Um, Daniel Outledge and Dave Forrester with you to go through uh, all of the action that we could make out this week uh, <laughs> in the uh, Super League Basketball Trophy. Uh, I've been struggling with a chest infection, so I might be coughing all the way through, but I'll do my best to get to the end. Uh, let's yeah, start. I'll do my best not to give you much space to talk, shall I? Well, well we'll there's, there's, there's one space I'm going to take up, Dave. I bet there uh, is. So uh, let's start on Thursday. Uh, London Lions 76, Bristol Flies 65. Uh, no Rye uh, for London, no Smith for um, Bristol. And then Hadzi Begovic uh, was in. Combined uh, one for 15 from three-point range in the first quarter, Dave. This was hard to watch, and not just because it was red versus black again. Yeah, yeah, well... Um... It's going to be a fairly current theme, I think, isn't it? That the you know, um, color gate is um is happening in front of our eyes at the moment. Um, for those who don't know, dance club thing. Yeah, well, they they will know by the end of this show, Dave. Yeah, well, I think they're probably by the end of the last one as well. Mm. Um, you can't talk about this game without talking about the game the night before. That's the problem. Mm. Um, you know, the night before, uh, we had um, Bristol playing against Bamberg, mm. our German Bundesliga team. Probably the highest level team in the AMBL, probably that's ever been in the AMBL. When you look at the various leagues that, that have teams in the AMBL, and welcome to the Wise Campus. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, different it's, from the uh, Audi old, Dome and the Mercedes Benz yeah, Arena. But... Old, yeah, old Granby Holmes type mm. vibes. Eh? Mm. Um, and um, and came out and gave them everything they could. Mm. You know, and and. And you know, played with a ton of energy, um, and and what happens is these guys are getting up for these games. Mm. And this is something you know. This is a, this is a, it's a shop window. There's something off out of the norm, but more than anything, you know, it's a chance. You mm. know, it, it, it's you don't get they're not you know some of these American guys playing at Bristol, may not ever play in another European competition. Mm. You know, mm. because there aren't that many clubs in Europe who do. There's either the ones who are really really good. Who you'd have to say, you know, unless you kind of crack it like in Al Durham or someone like that. Yeah. Unless you're a London player, you're probably not going to reach the level of BJ King, I suppose, is the better BJ example, King. having come BJ through Bristol. Bristol. Yeah. Um or you play or you might not be in a team whereby who are competing in the NBL, which is basically the invitation com- competition across kind of mid-level leagues across Europe. Mm. You've got you got to kind of land nicely to get that opportunity. Yeah. And um, I thought Bristol gave them everything, and you know, and, and to, to lose by ten at home to a to a German Bundesliga team is it, it, it's it's really encouraging from my perspective um, for our league. Uh, and given that Bristol's basically a new team, mm. you know, they, they they played together what you know five or six weeks. Yeah, the Americans are basically all new, um, apart from Keady, who's playing a different position. And you've got a few guys off the bench, but but still a busy new team, and so to to kind of compete with the frosty that they did was always going to pay a, uh, pay a toll on them for Thursday night, and um, you know again that's a scheduling thing. I assume London couldn't get the gym at any other time, mm. um, but what we're going to come across, and certainly we're actually really going to come across it this year with um, across the year it's going to be Bristol and Newcastle. And at the moment, it's Caledonia. Obviously, you're mm. right in the middle of it. Is we're going to come across some kind of rest disadvantage games. Yeah. And and it's not a question of players being tired because obviously players are players and players want to play. It's how tired they are. It's how they they are in comparison with the opposition. That yeah, moment. exactly. You no, know, it's it's uh, everybody's equally equally on equal schedule. It's fine, but London have had what two weeks to kind of mm. get themselves up to, to you know to think about. Getting better to play, to be ready to play the next game, and, and Bristol have basically poured every bit of energy and every bit of emotional intensity they had into the Bamberg game. And I thought what we saw was, um, yeah, an ugly game. Mm. Struggled to hold my attention, to be honest. Mm. Um, 
you know, London, obviously a work in progress, nice pieces, but nowhere near where they need to be. And, and Rye is a connector. So mm. without him, it becomes very difficult for the pieces to kind of jig together. No one could make a shot. Mm. Um, I think after Robinson made the first three of the game, Bristol could basically like 20 odd points in the first half after that. Mm. Mm. And um, London just basically had a little bit more 50 50 in them. Yeah. Know, a few more. Um, plays with Matt and then Jordan Taylor put it away with a three point shot coming off the screen. Well, the, before we get to that, Lions 11 2 run 24 17. They kept the lead till halftime despite shooting 0 for 11 from three point range, 33% from the floor. They were still ahead, but they were ahead because it was 27 15 on the rebounds and they were 16 of 20 from the free throw line. Mm-hmm. Uh, Flyers dragged it back uh, a little bit in the third quarter, but Taylor and Delaire. 14 4 start, took it out to 64 50. And again, they made another run. And then you mentioned Taylor, big shot, dagger three, 72 63 with 145 yeah, to go. They made a little run, but the, 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 you're still you know, down six in a 60 60 game with 70 60 game with a minute to go. Yeah, and yeah. You're struggling, you know. I didn't really think that they had that big a run in them. Um, But I don't, you know, for me, that's it, it's a, it's fool's gold to, to take much in, out of that game. Yeah. Hard. Expect you know the Bristol players to have that same degree of um competitiveness and intensity that they had against against Bamberg. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, London's interesting. They they are actually really interested to see what Bozic makes of this team. Really interested to see because technically they've they've got size. I mean they've got plenty of size. Oh. Hazebegovic, um, Delaire, Soko. Oh, okay. those, yeah. those three. I mean Soko's a big guy. Yeah. Know, like the other guys, but maybe in that's. SLP terms, he's a big guy. Um, they've got the they've got decent size on the wings as well. Um, you know, with 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 um, Sandy and Rye when Rye mm. comes to play, and um, at the guard, obviously Jordan Taylor is is going to be tested. I think a little bit more this year because he's going to have to play a lot more minutes, and he won't, yeah, yeah, and he won't be getting an assist every time he passes the ball. No, which is kind of where he's been in the last couple of years. Um, but you know he he's a professional a professional guy. Teams do it. Brisket, we're waiting to see a little bit too. He's an interesting two guys. He's played at a high level. Flood again. You know, come out of Dutch league last year. Um, so they, they do have some some pieces there. But you know, the advantage they had last year was they could have a guy who played three hundred games in the NBA, mm-hmm. and um, halfway through the season. And obviously, I'm not sure they're going to be able to do that this year. No. Um, and no. you got deck. You got the whole Decker situation, which yeah, is yeah, wildly. sitting on the baseline watching. I'm getting paid to sit on the baseline watching, and I am mm. totally, utterly, on the fence about that. I am mm. really kind on of on the fence. Why, Dave? Well, one, I, I like Sam Decker. Mm. I like his game. I enjoy mm. watching him play. Yeah, yeah. Talented, talented basketball player. He's coming here to this country. He's done the right things in the right way. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, no question. He's been a great ambassador for um for the last two years. Not for seven seven seven, but for the for the BBL the last two years. Yeah. Um, I don't think one player makes or breaks anybody's team ever. Right, but he's not playing this year because. He signed a three-year contract, which he was entitled yeah. to sign. Yeah. And which he's chosen not to rip up, which, you know, if he wanted to rip it up, he could do and go and play somewhere else. But his wife's in London, family mm. in London, whatever. He signed a three-year contract. And now the rules have changed in, in the beginning of the second con- second year, mm. which basically say, salary, yeah, you're, we're paying you, Sam, which we're still happy to pay you. Mm. But we're still going to pay you. We assume he's being paid. I don't know for, for real, but I assume mm. it. Um, would take you well beyond our team salary cap. So you can't yeah. play him. Well, that, they, that they, conflicts me. That conflicts they, me. They, 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 they could play him. It's a luxury tax. They could pay him. They could play him. They'd have to pay for it, though. They'd have to pay a lot. Yeah, yeah. They'd have to yeah. pay for it. It's, but it's you not, see, uh, he he's not made... being... I mean, I read the I read the Mark Steen article, and yeah. I thought... The only thing I thought was, well, he's not being stopped by playing by the rules. He's been stopped by playing because they can't afford to pay the tax to play him. Yeah, that might be true. I'm sure it is true. Or choosing not to. Yeah, choosing not to. And this is why I'm... But, but that that comes about because of the rules that have been put in yeah, play, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. the other side of the argument, 
the rules that have been put in place to restore some degree of parity of competition and mm. sustainability of spending, yeah. right? which we've all banged on about for long enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay? My lawyer's head, my yeah. injustice head, is such that changing the rules halfway through someone signing a contract doesn't sit overly well with me, mm. right? Um, without me, if you're not going to make exceptions for players who are effectively already signed. But, yeah, I, no, I agree. I, I understand that. But from a HR point of view, the, the if he's being remunerated, which we assume he is, yes, then that sort of covers all of the, you know, he, he now has other tasks within the organization. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as we don't long get as you to don't play. detriment them. Yeah, no, it doesn't. But we I mean, we've all assumed he's just going to go on loan somewhere or other. We've all, I don't know why we all assume that, but we just assume that. But it's not happened, no, which I find not. surprising and, 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 by and, 21st of October. And the reason I'm conflicted is, as I say, we don't get the same play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's fundamentally it. And secondly, as I say, you know, they could have built an exception at the salary cap to say, you know, one player. What well, there's one British player, I think it's one British player. Yeah, they could yeah. have they could have written it to be one um already contracted player to be accepted or something like that. Yeah, I, I would, and whilst you know, I would not have had a problem with that. I don't. Um, and obviously, all the other guys from London who probably aren't on the certainly wouldn't have been on the money that Sam Decker is on. Mm. They've gone off to pursue their career. Why is that? Because they're still hoping to be on that upward trajectory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they don't need to be sitting out for a year, or they don't need to be in London when London aren't playing in Europe. Cup. They're going yeah. to try to get themselves in the Euroleague. They've not accomplished. Yeah, yeah. It's accomplished, okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I'm I'm on both sides. I'm I'm sitting literally one leg at either side of the fence. I want to yeah, yeah. the but uh, you know, but for one player in each team. Yeah, um, I guess it can be British but not American. Mm. Oh, I, 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 I would fully support the British bit because it's about that's keeping the best British players rather than just go get the best player you can find. That's about keeping the best British players. I get that, no problem yeah. with that. I, I, I sort of, I hadn't really thought about the sort of grandfathering in, yeah, sort of rule because it. I mean, it doesn't really. They, they're really struggling for players. Uh, really struggling for talent at the minute. Mm. They they haven't got enough. They're oh, they were owing whatever they were for before before that game, mm. and you know you got a guy of that level, former MVP, sat on the bench, sat on the on the end. It's not. I, I'm I'm pretty sure there'll be no tears cried in Bristol, Leicester, or sorry to see no. him sitting on the bench. But uh, but no. for the rest of us who just want to watch the games and want to see the. The best guys out there compete. I don't want to get this good. I'm not a fan of just throwing massive money at people. Yeah, yeah. NBA. I'm not a fan. Of that. This guy did two years. Yeah, he yeah. Did it well, he did it properly. You know, and he did. He didn't do anything at any point. You know, and and with money, with look, with money, with NBA, that comes ego, right? With that yeah, all yeah, comes ego, yeah, right? Yeah. And at no point has he done anything, which would lead you to believe that you know he could have been bigger than the league. He could have been. He could have yeah. been reloading it over people. He could have been throwing cheap shots. All this stuff. And he done nothing other than be a pro, mm. you know. And and I do have a. I, I'm I'm kind of talk myself into the side of you know mm. find a way. Um, yeah. it, you know. it it is harder to it is harder to sort of uh, sort of go well. They, you know that that's them's the breaks because it's him. Yeah. You know, yeah, we can think of we can think of players, the players who've been on that roster in mm. the last couple of years that no, nobody would yeah. care. They'd yeah, go, absolutely. fair enough, you just sit there, mate, we're not bothered. Yeah. But because it's him, you sort of go, oh, wouldn't you let him play? Yeah. But, but <laughs> I get, but, uh, you know. Well, yeah, okay, I'm going soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Delaire, 23 points and 12 rebounds, 11 of 12 from the free throw line. Soko, 14 points and 11 rebounds. Taylor, 13 points. 26 of 33 from the uh, free throw line. They won the rebounding by 12. They shot 37% from the floor and two for 22 from three and one by 11. But well, no, no, that's kind of the hunger thing. Mm. You know, the rebounding is just the hunger thing. It's also, and as I say, you can't take into account Thursday night's game without talking about Wednesday night's game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Robinson, 20 and eight. Walsh, uh, 15 points, nine rebounds. They were the only two in double figures. Let's go to Friday. Uh, Here's another one you'll be uh, talking about midweek, I think. Uh, Caledonia Gladiators, in fact, the next two. Uh, Caledonia Gladiators, 80. Sheffield Sharks, 94. Ali Hodges is ill, apparently. Jimenez was back. 
Bag Benley with about uh, three fouls, well, not about three fouls, exactly three fouls, in about 90 seconds early in the game. Um, so whilst it was even early on, I was thinking Shepherd are going to take advantage at some point because of the the numbers and 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 the well, I mean, the Carolina have still got enough players. The question is, have they got enough kind of good players or mm. high level players to, to kind of sustain mm. you know that because they're playing against eight or nine Sheffield players and Sheffield are only played eight or nine at the moment. Mm. Um, you know, then the, the bodies are there. The problem, um. For Caledonia is that whilst they have a ton of size, uh, that size does not reflect and translate well to to what they're facing on a day to day basis in the um in the league or in the trophy, you know. And, and the reality about Caledonia, and we'll talk about them a bit now because I'm, um is that you know they they're zero and eight against teams out of Manchester, mm, right? Yeah. And that first game against Manchester, that's zero and five in the in the trophy. And the first game against Manchester doesn't count because mm. literally Manchester met on the court. Yeah. Right? That was a pre-season game. And the last game against Manchester, they won because Patrick Whelan carried them to winning. Yeah, 15 points in about four minutes, wasn't it? And they won by five in Man, right? Mm. That was it. That's what Patrick Whelan was playing back in Man. He didn't allow them mm. to lose that game. Right? Now, since Patrick Whelan has gone down, they're injured. Mm. Um, their ability to create shots is almost disintegrated beyond you know to the point whereby you can't win games and i did some i actually did some i've done some research on this because i was Go on. Oh, just in the numbers on this right um if you take Jimenez and Whelan out which is the bib they've been out the past three games mm. okay then in all the trophy games so far this season in the in the, in the seven games they've played they have 89 team assists and 89 team turnovers wow right and I don't know, in relation to that, okay, only two players that they have who are positive assist over turnover ratio. Oh, okay. wow. That's Hill 41 yeah. 16. So he's okay. doing okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's there for. Yeah. Dubose 12 and 10. Not so really a massive sample. Yeah. And then you get into numbers like Fag Benley, one assist, 14 turnovers Eek. on 12 shots, on 20 shots, sorry. Barnes, five assists, 13 turnovers. Bonwas, nine and 12. Stuckman, eight and 18. Mm. Yeah, Hughes, five and seven. Ali Hodzic, three and six. And it's like, why is that so important? Because you have to be able to score, you have to be able to pass, you have mm. to be able to create. Mm. Right? These guys are all doing part of their job. Their job is not, and not their job, all those guys I've just read out, outside of Dubois, who's getting back to health, their job has not ever been to create for other players. Mm. You know, Fag like Benley, he's been a fan. Maybe Ali Hodgett a little bit. They play through him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe Ali Hodgett. But again, he was he was probably the least of the... He's, yeah, he's yeah, three yeah, and six, yeah, hasn't yeah. played that many minutes. So, yeah. Um, but you wouldn't expect the centre to be... No, no. Because he's going to no. turn it over. He's, there's going to be turnovers mm. as well. So you don't... I don't I don't hold it against any of them. I don't see no. any of them not doing their jobs. I mean, there are reasons for all of it. Low usage um, or being put in the situation. But what it adds up to... Is an offense which is just at times when without Whelan, who mm. incidentally in his three games is shooting 58 from two, 38 from three, 83 from the foul line, 15 assists and four turnovers. Mm. Right? So literally, he's got you know, five assists a game, one turnover a game. Yeah. He makes them go. Yeah, yeah, he does. So yeah. It's, it's, it's a it's, massive, massive. It's not a whole. It's a great. I didn't time. when I looked when I started looking at the numbers. I didn't think it would be as mm. stark as it is. That you know, without him, they've just they just hit walls in a game, and, mm. and you can't be like you know you can survive, and all these guys can play, and they're all kind of doing their jobs to a certain degree. They're all you know, none of them you would say he's not doing what he's meant to do. Or, you know, Omar's is playing defense and trying to make shots early on. You know, Stuckman is knocking down shots and they're all going back and forwards. Um, um you know, Fraser started making some shots as well. The you know, Barnes is battling, but when you put them together, they are mm. without those two guards in particular, but even with them, mm. um, or certainly without Whelan, you know, you take Whelan out of that team, I expect every team in the league to beat them at the moment. Mm. So I don't think their balance is right. And what they don't have um, is a... Because I've, I've talked about all those wings there and all the assist turnover things, um, but Malcolm, Onwas, Stuckman, Fag Benley, 
Um, they're not getting your easy baskets either. No, no. You know, no, they're it's going to hard run a work, bit. isn't it? It's hard. They're going to run a little it's bit. It's funny. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. If, if we wind the tape back five minutes, you said one player doesn't doesn't make a team, but I did. Yeah, Patrick <laughs> Williams <laughs> close to it. Touché. With Caledonia. Touché. I don't think one player wins. Wins. Yeah, I don't yeah, think one player yeah. can win you a league. That's the thing yeah, I'd point yeah. out to make with Decker. Yeah. But one player, the one, the wrong player, yeah. one player can certainly kill a team if that makes sense. Yeah. And um, the Pat Whelan thing. So I, I think the roster structure is, it's been predicated on, you know, being efficient mm. and, and meticulous and methodical. And and then when you lose the one guy who's maybe a little bit ahead of everybody else in relation to what's going on. I think they've just they've fallen by the wayside. Mm. So in this game, they, they played hard, just like they played. Yeah, they're, they're, they're actually they're playing hard. They played hard against Dijon yeah, in yeah. the European game on Tuesday night, yeah. and then got blown out in the third, third and fourth quarter. Yeah, same oh. when we get to Cheshire as well. It's the same. Yeah. Uh, there were no major runs in this. The only time it was more than a basket uh, was uh, two forty-four to go in the second quarter. The Sheffield were up seven after six unanswered points. But I always felt that Sheffield were going to win this game. It was still a two-point game with six minutes to play, though. I thought Rotino actually, down the stretch, made a couple of big plays. He, well, had, yeah, I mean, what, he had that what, corner three. He did, and he moves. He's moving mm. really well. And what, the, thing with Sheff, the thing with Sheffield that we found, actually, is that losing the big guy... Um, I, I talked last week, you know, Cheshire or Ziggin, when everybody else is zagging, they're playing five out, effectively. Mm. Um, five guys on the perimeter they're in. And, and using their athleticism. By losing by losing um the big guy Mitchell, the Tiber is playing a heck of a lot of Jamel at mm. the five. Mm. Right? And Jamel's always been a great defender and a great excellent an excellent um utility guy. He's done what the team needed. He's rarely defended the five. He's always you know, he's primarily been a one through four because Rob mm. always used to have him at the always used to have a center on the court. But the game has changed so much. Um that if you look around the league now, and in fact you look around Europe now, bigs are set, bigs are screening and rolling. There mm-hmm. are very few bigs who are posting up with post moves. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. And the one in this game that would have would have been Ali Hodzic, and obviously he wasn't playing. Mm. And and they would use Otterobia on him, I assume, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. So when Ali Hodzic isn't um, on the court, and you're looking at all these other teams, and you know Cheshire aren't throwing the ball to anybody in the post. Mm. Um, Bristol aren't occasionally a Robinson, but you know, there's not mm. much post play going on. It's not, yeah. not something well, you, what you see is actually like what Cheshire do do is throw it to the, the two or the three or the four in the post rather than the five in the yeah, post. Well, they, they yeah, well, they accept the mismatch, yeah, yeah, and they use the five to, and the big guys cleared away from the yeah, yeah. space. So, offensively, that creates a lot of space. Um and now what Sheffield have done is they've brought in a they've, they've found Chapman, mm. right? And um, so Sheffield the Sheffield can get away with it defensively because Anderson's really just having to guard the screen and rolls. He can switch on them. He can you know he doesn't mm. have to body people up. He's not getting knocked around. Even he's always in the help side because he's a smart defender. So he's 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 helping them. And then you've got Chapman offensively, and Chapman is clearly a um, penetrating guard. You know everything you see. He may have made one three. Mm. He doesn't. He, you know, he'll shoot it, but it doesn't. I'm far more comfortable if I'm got, if I'm coaching against him, watching him shoot it, than watching him get his two or three dribbles because he's shifty and he's got the ability. He's got a little bit of size about him. He can finish at the rim. The first game he had eleven foul shots. You know that doesn't come by chance. Mm. And um, the paint is now open for him. Mm. Yeah, and, true. Yeah, and on top of that, the paint is open for Retinio to mm. doing what Kristen does for Cheshire and yeah. cutting for his offensive rebounds from the yeah, corner yeah. and being busy and being quick and getting 15 points without you realising how he's got them. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So they've kind of morphed a little bit into kind of a less bombastic Cheshire, if I can mm. put it that way. Yeah, yeah. In the way that they're playing when Anderson plays the five. All right? Now, the issue for Sheffield will be down the line. Obviously, Coke's going to come back in, so they probably won't be playing like that as much. Mm. And whether it will be sustainable, because they don't have the bodies that the Cheshire guys have. Mm. The Cheshire guys are 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, whereas the the, um, the Sheffield guys, probably not quite as, um, you know, um, Groves and um, the, the, the shoe like Griffin. No, I keep getting his name wrong. Uh, Nixon. No, no, the other one. The corner. Oh, Jeffries. 
Jeffries, sorry, Blake, it's Blake, Blake Griffin, Blake Jeffries. Um, Drake Jeffries. Drake Jeffries, that's yeah, right. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. Drake. I I do know, I do know who you are. I apologize. It's just a name that doesn't stick with it for some reason. Mm. Uh, but those guys aren't really kind of met to kind of to to go the same way as some of the the the, the Cheshire wing guys body wise. Mm. They're, they're more skilled. So I'm not sure it'll be entirely sustainable for Sheffield to do it. But at the moment, it's working really well because it allows retaining your touches and because. They're effectively playing with two point guards, and Nixon is Nixon is really impressed so far. Mm. Even though you know since the first week, I thought he's a bit uncertain. You know, he has a confidence about him. It's not quite a swagger, but it is a confidence. Mm. It's just on the right side of swagger, in an mm. eye, in a look in his eye. You know, mm. and uh, adding Chapman to him because Chapman's different than him because Nixon isn't a guy who's going to get to the rim very often. He's going to pull up. He's going to get his shot. Chapman's a guy who's always looking to kind of pull calls in the defense and get mm. to the rim, which means mm. that they can play. You know, a game and without needing much out of their bigs, and, and then mm. Groves and Jeffries just pick you apart when you when you forget about them. Mm. Uh, I mentioned that that three from uh, Rutina, two and a half to go. It was an eight point game. That was that was basically the decider, and uh, Sheffield ended up comfortable in the end, fourteen points. Uh, Debose twenty five points, ten of twelve. That must have felt really good for him. And this is a good. Yeah, to see I mean, that. In, in the reality is, he's he he basically kept the game close. Mm. Because again, it's that shot creation thing, mm. you know. You know that where else are they going to get the shots? Well, they couldn't really guard the boys because that's a slight downside for Sheffield with their with their guard line and because Chapman's a little bit smaller. Um, Nixon maybe, maybe not. But um, oh, yeah, I thought he was great. Mm. Malcolm as well, five of eight for thirteen points. Uh, that was good signs for them. And on last 12, 21 turnovers though. Yeah. But... Uh, Rutino eight for nine. 19 points and five rebounds. Nixon, 19. Groves and Chapman, 13. 52, 34 points in the paint in favour of Sheffield. Yeah, and that's not... But points in the paint nowadays aren't what they were, are they? No, no, no. It's not It's not who's got the biggest guys. It's, it's, it's who's got who's, the quickest who's, guys. Who's, who's got the quickest guys and who's got the most space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, pick up on a little. You were talking about Anderson. Yeah. Uh, Lasker pulled out a stat this morning. Very impressive. Yeah. Anderson, plus 20, 31 minutes, no points, no rebounds. How many did they win the game by? Uh, 14. So the eight minutes he did, nine minutes he didn't play, they lost by six. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, no points. But... No points, no rebounds, plus 20. That's never happened since we've been tracking plus minus. Uh, it was uh, 16, 17. Oh, excuse me, that that started. There's only ever been one player who's got no rebounds at plus 20 or more. And that, that was actually um, uh, Jalen Hunter against Bristol on the opening day of yeah. the season this year. There, there was, I forget, 16 or 17, 18 guys who've got no points in plus 20 or more, yeah. including Lasker himself. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it's strange because, you know, it did kind of take me back. You know, Jamel's reached that kind of stage in his career whereby there's only a certain type of player can do what he did in that game. Mm. Right, because firstly, it has to be a player whose ego is just not checked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. They put their ego on one side, who has got accomplished everything they're going to accomplish, who has nothing to prove to anybody. Right. Secondly, um, it has to be somebody who, in their own mindset, is unselfish. Mm. Right, and that sounds crazy because, to be honest, to be a pro basketball player. You have to be selfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a lot about you, and some of it's just a degree of selfishness. Yeah, right? a degree of how much are you willing to subsume your ego, so that people don't judge you on the basis of what that number, those numbers say at the end. Mm. Oh, you're not getting a touch, or no, you're not getting a look. They're yeah. not passing you the ball. I'm disrespecting yeah, you. Yeah, you got yeah. to be able to put all that, all that way around, and you only get that from the kind of the the comfort level of having accomplished things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Certain in your own mind. That's what it was. Um. Or you get that if you've got absolutely no interest in your own individual's um, circumstances because you know that you're only being judged on how your team is. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah, I had yeah. my player coach used to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wasn't, you know, to him, he did not. He didn't have to worry about what numbers yeah, he got. Yeah. He's being judged on whether his team wins. Or do they win or not? Yeah, yeah. Nobody at the anymore. end of the year is going, Fab, you only average four points a game this year. <laughs> four points a game, yeah, four trophies. I know you won four trophies, but come <laughs> on. Yeah. And and so, but you have to, but it's a mindset which is accrued and but ultimately by um, experience and by comfort level and by an understanding. It also means that he's set within that group 
and he light, which is important. Yeah, he's yeah. Shot, and that he that he's comfortable with the group. He's comfortable yeah. with other people yeah, taking yeah. those shots. Yeah. Okay. Comfortable setting the screens. Comfortable playing the defense. Which because believe me, players aren't. He wasn't like that at Manchester last year. Mm, mm. Right. And players aren't like if players don't like the guys they're playing with, or if there isn't a good rhythm of the squad, good vibe. It ain't mm. going to show. They've got good vibes at the moment. Um. Mm. And I understand why he doesn't want it. And I, I don't think losing the big guys really harmed that, to be honest. No, no. Um, That's why it's intriguing to see that they see replace him. Like, because he was a good player. It's not like he was a scrub they were, they were happy to get rid of. He was a good player. He's a big part of what they do. But actually, you know, actually, they're, you know, they're, you're they're a bit got, different you replace, now. You replace a, a big guy with a guard, and now a yeah, guard is scoring. Yeah. But you've got, because you've got a big guy who's willing to do all the stuff without all yeah. the stuff that you want a big guy to do. And Jamel counts as a big guy. Without complaining about it, yeah, 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 you know, and having that mentality, and having you, and then putting scorers around someone like that, you know, again, like mm. we did with Charles and Scott mm. and, and whatever, you've got someone who's going to be that central point, just going to make everything else better, make mm. everybody else better, and that's their entire function. Mm. You become a very popular player very quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah Why yeah. don't more people do that? Because players know that they want to get a job at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to see you know four points, three rebounds on yeah, the stage. Yeah, yeah. But, but as you do. say, he's got. How he's many seasons he's played, and everybody knows how good he is, and, and everybody in the league brings. can sign him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody in the league, and, and you know, he's been based in Manchester for a while now, and obviously, mm. wife of Manchester, kid in Manchester. Uh, Manchester didn't have a team this summer, so I assume that's Sheffield's nearest club, and that was probably yeah. his thought process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, you know, fantastic. You know, yeah. it, it, it was it was a bit of a throwback. Yeah. Uh, Newcastle Eagles 69, Cheshire Phoenix 90. Uh, ben Thomas not available because of family illness. Larry Austin Jr. is back, and what a game to come back to against his old club. Throw him straight into the starters, why don't you? As well, uh, Spencer into the starters as well, Dave. We need to pick that one up. And Delpesh yeah. 2059 seconds as well, which means he didn't start for very long. No. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things going on, isn't there? Um, where to start? Uh, well, again, same with Bristol. I have to start with Newcastle's trip on Wednesday night because they got a really good win in Slovakia. Yeah. I don't know if you watched that game, but um, it, was, um, it wasn't it was a game that was just their, their turn of a win. They had to play well to win it. Um, and I know because I know that they didn't fly from Newcastle straight into Kasici. They flew from Luton. Mm. And you know, and by the time they got back from having a night in Slovakia, you know, they're getting back in Newcastle at kind of eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock on Thursday night, midnight time. Mm. Um, and again, they sign up for it, so yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to, you know, throw the, I'm not going to blame anybody, but you can't analyze the game without knowing of that. Mm. Um, and again, so there's a rest disadvantage thing there in relation to um. Spencer. Spencer, I think it'd probably been coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coming because he'd been playing so well. I don't, I don't imagine he will be the long term solution as the starting point guard. I think he probably could be, but I think the team has probably capped a little bit. I, I did see that if Jordan Spencer has to start mm. as opposed to coming off the bench because he'd been doing a fantastic job off the bench when Newcastle had probably been better than they had mm. in the starting lineups. Um, obviously, that's going to leave a question in relation to uh, Jalen Llewellyn, mm. uh, but who actually played quite well in this he game. He was pretty good, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, had 11 points in this game as a scorer gave them a bit of a boost. So that they're, they're all kind of the roster things that, that Mark's going to have to figure out. Um, in relation to um, Larry Austin, that's, yeah, I was intrigued by that pickup. Um, I wasn't, I, I see absolutely why they've done it. Mm. I think, um, obviously he didn't have a job, that's the first thing. So, um, mm. Clemens didn't disappoint me. Didn't no, no. Clemens at all. Um, I don't think. I don't think they would have made a change if it wasn't Larry Austin. Yeah, maybe. The, the, maybe. the history, the, the history was, that, that against, team against, has. You never know what's happening in the group, though. Yeah, I mean, Clemens yeah. probably came in to be the starting point guard, and he wasn't the starting point guard. Yeah, maybe. You know, so I think it's a vibe thing. Mm. I would, you know, I'm not, not that I'm overly. Um, down with the vibes, as mm. you can probably tell. Um, sing along to Aerosmith in the car this morning. Um, but I think it's a vibes thing, uh, and I think if they didn't know the person it was, that's right. So I think they've they've brought him into kind of you know uh, I think Drew said it best turbo you know turbo charges what is already quite mm. a powerful engine. Mm. Um, from a pure basketball perspective, um, 
I was kind of on the fence because I saw the good and the bad of Larry Austin last year. Um, I think he he was a he is a great guy. Clearly, he, his energy level is infectious. It's always up there. Everybody mm. liked him, mm. even on the Eagles team last year, where you got the impression that something like others. Everybody liked Larry Austin, mm. um, and he never gave anything other than um, his best. Mm. Um, he didn't. He got kind of squeezed out a little bit last year with the three guards, um, and he never really kind of got to the point whereby he looked comfortable coming off the bench. Mm. Or, or he didn't. He never got the impression that he really bought into coming off the bench. Um, which I think would. I think still and Ben did it on Sunday. I think would still mm. be his best. His best rule. Yeah, I thought that uh, oh, was it the year they won the trophy. He was coming off the bench. Yeah, for just, it's just the just the level games. Of explosion. You know, yeah. the cause fact that he just flies around. Mm. He creates havoc, and he's going up against people. He's coming against tighter players, or maybe mm. the last couple of minutes before they come off. But I didn't think he really bought into that Newcastle. But that was probably a team makeup thing. Mm. Um, the upside for them is he, he you know, is their transition game, which is what they do. Mm. You know. And their offensive rebounding game, which is what they do. And um, the downside to them is that they lose a little bit of spacing. Mm. In fact, they lose a lot of spacing mm. because apart from in this game, yeah, in this one, and he enjoyed them, Dave. He hit two threes, and I mean, yeah, and, and that, that's that's all well and good, and, uh, and you're gonna you're gonna hit those shots. And I don't have, a, I see no problem with him hitting those shots. But he shot sixteen percent from three last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, so you know that that's that might be the situation. Whatever he shot sixteen percent of BBL, yeah. so. Um, I don't think Cheshire brought him back for his three point shooting. No, no, no. Now he made them. He played obviously. He played. He played great in this game. His, his energy levels was up. He was all over the place, and he's a good fit for everything. And he's, he's as I say, I get the vibe thing. I really think that's that works for them. Um, and at the moment, they're not showing much in the way of. They're sh- but basically, they're they're in that lovely place, Cheshire, at the moment, whereby. You have to be a very good team to beat them. Yeah, and you have to be not just have to be a very good team to beat them. You have to be a very good team to beat them for forty minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're going to go because they have the spirit ability we talked about last year, whereby it's seven, eight, nine, ten points bang. Mm. And in Holden, and I watch. I mean, I was watching them up close. I always like watching teams up close. The first thing you get is the physicality of them. Right, they are a physical team. They're not a big team, but they're not. They're they're, they're, they're a wide team. They're all six five or six six. Um. There's nobody you look at and think, oh, he's kind of the hole or he's a little mm. guy or whatever. Um, and you, you, you have Atwood, um, the new fella, Tyreek, um, Idle Rock, Kristen, all those guys, they're all they're all chiseled. Mm. You know? And then you throw on top of that a six foot five point guard. Mm. Right? And Holden has a chance to be the league MVP this year. He only has a chance. Right, he has a chance because one, he's got the ball, he's gonna have the ball in his hands a heck of a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, two, he he's got a lot of good places to throw it as well. He is a gifted passer. Mm. And three, if you don't help and you stay on the shooters, he can not necessarily score enough, but he can rebound enough of his own misses. Mm. Whereby his numbers are going to be high, and he's going to be mm. efficient because he had seven, and he had a lot of offensive rebounds. Not maybe mm. on this, maybe in the Sunday game. So. It's not so much about you know guarding even guarding Skyler White this team. It's about guarding Cam Holden, mm-hmm. and can you force him to become a jump shooter and take him away from the basket? And that's not going to be easy because you've also got to stop and get out of transition, and you've also got to stop and get into second shots mm-hmm. and all those things. And eventually, and then Newcastle did a pretty good job for about three quarters. To be fair, mm-hmm. in the game, I mean, it was a twenty odd point game at the end, but. Ultimately, so, to, let me just run through it quickly. Make sure the 11 are running the first quarter to lead 12-17. They kind of stayed in front. Got to 11 in the middle of the second quarter. Eagles with eight in a row to cut it to three. A couple of Austin threes that we touched on a moment ago in the third quarter pushed it back out to 11. Eagles again back down to three. Two minutes into the fourth quarter. And then uh, Cheshire with White, Eitel Rock both getting five. Kristen four. Scored 14 points in a row and it went from... Uh, a three-point game to 59-76, and that was it. Yeah, I just think at that point, Newcastle ran out of, a little bit out of legs. I, mm. You know, I'm not, the exit, the exit, the, the Spencer starting means that Spencer's not running that second unit, mm. which energy is down to full, having to come in after 35 seconds. I mean, he's playing a bit longer than he otherwise would. The, not a great matchup for Cheshire with Cheshire's 
um, it is, you know, to beat Cheshire and Newcastle, they're going to have to win the Battle of Styles. Mm. And they didn't in this game, you know. Um, and um, they also just lapsed a little bit on their scouting reports near the end. Um, Holden's really interesting because, you know, we've talked time and time on this show, you, you don't give up a strong side corner three where if Holden's, if, if you've got mm. guards on the side of the court, you won't give up a, a one pass to the near corner to shoot it. With Holden, you've almost got to rewrite that because when he is on... The right hand side of the floor, he is flinging it to the far corner. Mm. Laser like Doncic, like you know, yeah, he is, yeah. The passing is, you know, there was one on Sunday where we found White in the opposite corner. Yeah, and secondly, and if you turn and no, no, those those defenders are the ones who are thinking they're going to help on the on mm. the roll. They're having a little little skive in the far corner. The ball mm. on the other side, boom, ball past you, gone, done. Mm. If you're not on point. You're not on point. Um, and secondly, if he's in the post. He is flit on, particularly when he posts up on the left block. So he's coming to the right hand to the middle, which is his move. He is also looking to fling it to the corners, mm. fling it to the, out, you know. And if you don't stay on that corner, that's a layup for those guys because mm. they are so used to do, practicing that shot. And because his passing is so good and so much so on point. Mm. Um, so I think it's going to be the holding rules for to, be, mm. to beat Cheshire. I really think mm. you're going to have to find a way of handling him. And the only and I say that he's, the reason he's a potential MVP is because he's a triple double threat every game. He's going to have mm. the ball in his hands a lot, and the only thing he's going to have to do is make sure he stays out of his own way. Mm. Mm. Stays out of his own way, doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. He likes to talk a lot. Don't have a problem with talking a lot. That's fine. Um, but don't you know? But it's between games. You know, you're going to refocus between games and do it again the next game, and mm. do it again the next game, and do it again the next game. Uh, our team's going to find a way. Are they going to pressure him in the backcourt? Are they going to put a little guy on him? You know, how how are teams going to game plan for it? Are we going to see any zone? Because to be honest, since the league was started being shown on the zone, we have seen none of the zone. No, no, we haven't seen none of the zone. No. Nobody's playing the zone at all. Mm -hmm. um, so that's interesting. But Cheshire, I thought were impressive. Um, I, I don't think they were great. I think they can play better. And I, the reason I say that is because I'm not going to let the last eight minutes impact the first 32 minutes when you're yeah, yeah. with them. Newcastle, I thought, I thought Ward Hibbert again was just the leader for Newcastle. There's one play where he literally took the ball off, pressured the half court, prevented um, the point guard from getting the ball, then stole it and then threw it backwards and dived around. Yeah, yeah, um, I remember it. You know, you know, just this incredible play, you know, incredible leader like play. So I still like them. I just think obviously they've got some, the, the, the yeah, the, the, they are missing, you would think, a starting point guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Akoro 13, Llewellyn 11, Ward Hibbert 9, Alan Eikens all 10, 38% from the floor, 3 of 21 from 3. And people uh, say, just, just so people say again, you know, Bristol's shooting on the Thursday night as well. Mm. Legs, is, legs is shooting. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Leg, that's where the, it's not the game playing the games that kind of hits you. It's the travel. That's why these NBA guys travel around on private planes and all types of stuff and get all the head. It's a bit different when you're flying back to Luton and easy jet and you're yeah. The legs, it's a legs that hurt you. Yeah, and yeah. um, they, they, that's why they miss. Yeah, uh, Christian 18, Holden 17 points, nine rebounds, nine assists, triple double threat in this game. Uh, Atwood 15 and uh, 11 rebounds. Let's go to Saturday, Dave. Oh, yeah, come on then. Do you want to get yourself a diet coke and sit back for a minute? Yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah, so uh, uh, Saturday, to beat Surrey, apparently. Yeah. For those of you who could uh, who could see it, see it. Uh, bear with me, Dave. But uh, yeah. I was lying in my sick bed on Saturday night, ah. and uh, it was it's my mum's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, oh, mum! But she was going somewhere or other, so that we had our birthday celebrations on Saturday. But I was too ill to go to them, and I was sat there watching this game. And my kids came home. And one of them, my mum had sent me a bit of cake. So I'd had this cake, and I don't know if it was the cake and the mother, but I was reminded watching this game of a book I used to read to my kids when they were young. It was called We Are Wearing Out the Naughty Step. It was a bedtime, <laughs> bed, bedtime favourite of ours. Great, uh, great uh, picture book. See, my kids are perfect. I would never have to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, the reason I was minded of this, the plot of the, the, plot of the book is basically this frazzled mum of two, two kids and a dog and the kids keep doing things, end up on the naughty step. Mm -hmm. And the crescendo of the book happens when it's the mother's birthday and the kids have got their hands in the cake and got the icing 
and then decided to eat the icing off the cake yeah. and the dog does as well. And the mum walks in and she goes, that's it. That's really, really it. <laughs> I have reached the end of my tether. And that is when she did the amazing thing. If you want to know what the amazing thing is, go buy the book. Oh. But I, at that point, was at the end of my tether. Yeah. Because yeah. for the third Saturday in a row, Dave, three Saturdays in a row, I've been watching Red versus Green. And mm. this, my friends, was the worst one for me. Everybody's colorblind is, uh, colorblindness <laughs> is slightly different. But for me, this game was completely unwatchable. Basically, they were two teams in the same kit. They could have swapped the names on the front. It would have made no difference at all to me. And I've got to the point now, I'm always the one, you know, when you were moaning about fixtures the other week, Dave, I was like, yes. well, let's give them some slack. Yeah, 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 some yeah. slack. I've run out of slack, Dave. I have no <laughs> more slack to give. I've had enough now. And I just think it's unacceptable that we've got to this. And I get you know, you kit might be on the slow boat from China or whatever it is, whatever the reason is that we've only got one uniform per team, seemingly. By the way, Leicester played in black on the opening day of the season, you yeah. may recall. Why were they not playing in black? And full disclosure, somebody from Leicester contacted me this morning, having seen my tweet on uh, yeah. Saturday night and said, oh, sorry about that. Didn't know, blah, blah, blah. And they will play in black on Wednesday. So give them credit for at least picking that up and then making a... Oh, well, that's obviously for not listening, not listening to this show. Well, there is that. But yeah, obviously, yeah. I'm doing the commentary on on yeah. uh, on on Wednesday night for oh, Leicester cool. against Surrey. Not? Come on, let's let's, let's no, just for see. Leicester against Surrey. So no, I no, already... please, I would absolutely yeah. love to hear you commentate on a <laughs> when you on, a, so on a colorblind game. That would yeah, be yeah. incredible. So, so anyway, going back to going, I haven't finished my rant, Dave, and you're no, not getting no. me off my rant. I'm going back to it. So two weeks ago, I mentioned this last week, but two weeks ago, the league was called out on social media by colorblind.org, a campaigning uh, thing. Who'd obviously seen Bristol against, uh, sorry, the first, the yeah. first game. And to his credit, the interim chair of the league responded from his own personal Twitter account and said something along the lines of, "New league, uh, you know, kit issues, blah blah blah." We will be better. Mm. Some some words like some words to that effect. Now, two weeks later, we're no better. One Reasonably. week later, we were no better. Yeah. And 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 actually, from my perspective, it's got worse because yeah. Bristol versus Surrey was really bad. Surrey versus Bristol was awful, and 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 Surrey versus Leicester was essentially unwatchable. And what it leads me to think is either. There is no manufacturer in the entire country, this country, who can print up 12 white shirts with numbers on or 24 and send 12 of them to Bristol and 12 of them to Surrey and, and say, when the away team turns up, get them to wear that. When you go away, you wear that. Because the whole South group can get in the bin as far as I'm concerned because it's red, black and green. It's just it's just a colorblind nightmare, the whole thing. So every week we've been watching this to a lesser extent or a greater extent. And I mourn for the British manufacturing uh, community, if that is true. I don't believe it is true. But if that is true, that we couldn't rustle up something, somewhere, somehow. Or the alternative is for me to believe that actually we will be better just means at some point in the future when the boat turns up or whenever the kit turns up or whatever. Well, I don't know. Some reason awake, it might be red. So there might not be a solution to this. Bristol's awake, it might be green. Then that's so I don't know it's going to be better. And again, <laughs> I'm not having but a it go. It always used to be lights and darks, didn't it? Exactly. And I'm not having a go because I, I, I did think. You are. Uh, I, I, no, I'm having a go at the league in general. I'm not having a go at, at Vaughan Millet for, for that tweet because I thought yeah. that was very good. And normally yeah. sporting organisations just ignored it. And he didn't ignore yeah. it. He responded it to very quickly and he responded it to it very positively. But from that, somebody in the league should have done something that means a week later we're not watching the same two teams playing red versus green and two weeks later we're seeing another two teams playing red versus green it's just not acceptable and anybody who watches this show dave and i can see you trying to get in i'm not going to let you no, i'm not I'm, trying to get in I'm actually like the politician just... who's going to keep going no no not, no i'm not fine take, with that I'm, the word, I'm just thinking the word amen yeah the, the, this. Keep the, going. The, the the um the people who watch this show 
will know that you go off on a rant, Dave, yeah. and then I throw in some stats somewhere along the line. So I'm going to throw some stats into my own rant here, Dave, because really? I've done some research sure. as well, and I've got some stats down here. Yeah. And and it's probability, Dave. I know you oh, like great. a bit of probability, yeah. A-level maths and all of yeah. that sort of thing. Probability says there is one player on both teams on Saturday who is colorblind. One in 12 males are colorblind. There'll be 12 on on both teams. So one of them will, there will be a colorblind person, probability says, okay? Probability says three referees, there is a 12.4% chance to be exact that one of the referees will be colorblind. Now we know, Dave, that those three refs on Saturday were all male. And for those who don't know, colorblindness yeah. is more prevalent in males than females. It's a chromosome thing. People, you can look it up, X chromosome, mm. right? So knowing right. there were three males, the percentage chance that one of the referees is colorblind goes up to 22%. 22% chance, Dave, that one of the key decision makers in the game cannot tell, tell the, the two team teams apart. apart. I mean, it just boggles the mind. It's just, what are we doing? Mm. And then I don't know how many people turned up to the game on Saturday. It looked like a normal crowd at Surrey Sports Park to me. So on the basis of what a normal crowd at Surrey Sports Park is, there'll be somewhere between 30 and 40 people who've paid their money on a Sunday after Saturday evening in Guildford, whatever it costs to get into a Surrey uh, game, to watch a game. They can't tell the difference between the two teams or they at least struggle to tell the difference between the two teams. What are we doing to those people? Are we giving them their money back? Are we saying, sorry, did we do anything? What if that was their first time turning up to Surrey Sports Park? Would they want to come back next week? What if it was their second time turning up to Surrey Sports Park and they come last week and gone, oh no, it's red versus green. Oh, I'll give them one more chance and come next week. It's red versus green again. And guess what? Leicester go there again in about two weeks. Is it going to be, I'm assuming they'll go in black now. Now that I got a phone call this brave, morning, yeah, but, but it's one of those that things. didn't. And then, and then the audience sat at home like me, trying to watch it on television. Depending on the gender makeup of the audience, five to eight percent of the TV audience would not have been able to see the difference between the two teams, or or would have at least struggled to tell the difference between the two teams. And do you know what colorblind people do, Dave, when they see a game like this? Because I do, because I follow colorblind things on twitter well, right what happens is, TV on what no what happens is they take a picture of it they go onto social media they go look at this crap i'm turning yeah. off that's what they do they turn off it's ireland versus um ireland versus wales in the yes. rugby every year guaranteed full of um full of colorblind people on social media going, this is crap, I can't watch it. It's got so bad, they keep saying, oh, in two years' time, we're going to change it, and one of them's going to wear white. I've stopped watching that game. They may well have changed it. I've never gone back to check whether they ever changed it, because I gave up on Ireland versus Wales. Newcastle versus Sunderland in the FA Cup a couple of years yes. ago. Red yeah. and black stripes, white and black stripes. Absolute outrage. The NFL, a few years ago, had a colour block thing, where they made a big hoo-ha of it. You know, they normally have those little white shorts and whatever. One yeah. game on a Thursday night or a Monday night, it was a nationally televised game, block colour. So one team was entirely in red, one team was entirely in green, and that internet broke with colourblind people going, this is unacceptable. Blah. You know what the NFL did? They came out, they said, sorry, we got it wrong. It'll never happen again. And to my knowledge, it has never happened again. Yeah. Somebody did something about it. Exactly. And we've done the nice things so far. We've said the, you know, we've said, yeah. oh, yeah, we're going to sort it, sort it, sort it. We're not, we're going to sort it. And I get, I get you've got sponsors on your kit. I don't care. No, Make I the agree. game accessible and we'll yeah. worry about the sponsors in two weeks. We need to, plan A hasn't worked. The kit hasn't turned up. It's time to move on to plan B. That's it. You, this is too much now. And, you know, I've sort of nodded and winked at it. Oh, you've seen my tweets. Bristol are trolling me now. It's red versus black for the third time in a week. Mm -hmm. And then oh, I'm not sure about red versus green. And I had a little thing now. I'm done. I'm yeah. done. It's just not acceptable. We're, we're a month in. More than a month in, are we? I don't know. It's not acceptable anymore. It's just not acceptable. Somebody has to do something because you're just alienating. You're alienating me. It's not I even know, the audience, know, that, it's just, me. That thought was just going through my head, 50 years of watching this, you know, you're alienating me. 
it, it makes no sense. It just it, it anyway. Well, it's easy. It is easy solvable. Um, I I'm not going to seek to even um comment on what you've said. It's utterly correct and utterly um unanswerable. Um, and actually jarring a little bit because actually watching those games and the red and the black as well, I realized how rarely I'd seen it before. Mm. That made any sense because we grew group. It was always. I say, I've done, always I've done one, basketball one commentary for 25 years. No, more than that. Covering, covering this league, that the previous league and all of that. I've had one game, yeah. one game before this season where it was a problem. And that was Plymouth at Leicester, partly because the lighting there. And I was at the back of the, sorry, Leicester at Plymouth. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And it was at the back of the thing, and Leicester had this sort of dark red, and Plymouth had a dark sort of green. Yeah. And I sort of let it slide. You know, it was hard to commentate on, but I let it slide one game. And this yeah. is every week three yeah. red versus greens on three consecutive weekends. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, a- anyway, anyway uh, that was a high came, quality round. I came, I came like to, to the conclusion, am, uh, Dave. Sorry? I came to the conclusion. That this well, game didn't want me to engage with it, so I'm not going to engage with it. To. I've written nothing down. I've got nothing to say, except, and you know what my exception is. Yes. I thought that was an abomination at the end by then, Surrey, yeah. and I'm I'm not having a go at Surrey. I think the end of game play in this competition, with the odd exception, Leicester are bad people. Cheshire's shot against um, uh, uh, Sheffield to win yeah. the head to head. And they cut him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Andreas, Andreas calling a timeout down 11 on Thursday night. Yeah. Well, I applaud. The, 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 the rest of it has just been rubbish. And yeah. I know you, you have a slightly different view to me because you messaged me and yeah. said you thought actually it was a good move by Hunter, which allowed the open three. And yeah. actually, it wasn't really the open three that killed me. I wound back to see if the three was open. What killed me was. There was two and a half seconds left. The ball was inbounded and they dribbled it out. Yeah. I don't know if they have a call, if they have a timeout. Call a timeout, Van the ball, shoot a three. You're playing them again on Wednesday. Your only chance of getting through is by catching Leicester. Yeah. That's yeah, your only yeah. chance. So you need the head to head. Why are you letting them win by 12 when you could win by nine? Yeah. Lose by nine. You're playing them on Wednesday. Yeah. Anyway, th- and part of that was I did a Euro Cup game last week, uh, Borg on Brest against Turk Telecom, seven point game with about 45 seconds to go. And the two teams played that like the head to head was going to be decisive. Yeah. The way the team down seven was trying to lose by less than seven. The team up seven was trying to win by more than seven. And this is round five. Was it where we four or five of the Euro cup in a 10 game group. So it's really unlikely the head to head and the first meeting uh, really unlikely the head to head will even come into play with it. But I saw it being played properly by Americans, I must add, as well, yes. partly because the Turkish coach will cut you if you don't do it properly. Exactly. And 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 then I watched that dross after after and, and it's not I'm not having a go at Surrey. It just happens they caught me at a bad moment, you know, when I was already at the end of my tether, and I've seen every week somebody do stupid things at the end of the game that yeah. aren't in keeping with the rules of the game. That it's like it just bruh. So I, think anyway. my, I think I think my work with you is done. You know, yeah. I think I think, I'm, I think I'm, I've got kind of, I'm feeling a, somewhat of a paternalistic pride at the moment. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I'm finished, Dave. I'm finished. If you want to say anything about the game, that. you go for it. Um, in, well, in the briefest terms, I was after I, the quality of that rant was such that I am green with envy. <laughs> Are you red with envy? I I'm red tell. with envy. Um, boom, boom. Um, I'll give. I will give the. I'll give it lip service, as as I don't wish to um, overly rain on on that magnificent parade. Um, that's the start out like they hadn't played for a while, and that can you know it's rest versus rust that can also impact you. Um, and that for the first time their start on five actually struggled a little bit, but actually their bench brought them back into the game. Um, Connor looks like he's going to be a major piece this year, which is absolutely make crazy crazy important for them because it gives them a, a, a real option if if Hunter's hot and cold and that's probably their only the only real area where you'd say they don't have much you know that the, the, their depth is questionable which is kind of shock creation because they've got Ethan Wright and Abercrombie and Johnson 
Johnson maybe a little bit less so, but certainly right now, but Crombie, they're really not shot creators. Um, they're shot makers or playmakers, but they, they're going to do it off the catch, which means someone's got to get them the ball on the catch. So that at the moment, that is kind of Jackson and Hunter. Um, and But it's going to be really important when those guys aren't there in particular that, that Washington's able to take it over. Um, Bowman made some shots, which is important for them. You know, at the end of the day, if he's going to be a player and he's had now three years now, if he's going to be a, a really impactful player, he has to shoot the ball. He has to make shots. He has to be, he has to be, if he's shooting 35% from three, he becomes a real threat. Um, but he's not been close to that his first two years, but he made some shots in this game. And um, sorry, he started off really well. Mervyn James, um, really impactful. And um, they scored with their starting five quite comfortably, but there's not much beyond their starting five when you look to BBL or SB, SLB um, kind of you know, experience. You've got Jordan Hunt coming back off injury, still doesn't look as mobile as, as he was last year. You've got the two young lads, Tobinskis and Parkinson. Um, you've got the American guy, Bra um, Raquan Brown, who's um, kind of a shooting guard, kind of. He's not really he's not really a wing. And then you've got Teo, who's at the other end. And I don't think that line, I don't think those guys really stood up well and they're going to be inconsistent because that's what they are. They're, 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 none of them are, are um, known quantities. Or well, none of them are, you know what you're going to get type of guys. Teo, Basically, because he, uh, the experience he's got, you know, the age he's at, he's going to have some, a little bit like Darius, he's going to have some games where he's massively impactful and other games where he's not. Mm. He's not young guys because they're going to be, they're, they're going to be young guys, they're going to make mistakes. And um, they don't have the wings they had last year. You know, last mm. year they had like four wings. Yeah, they had, yeah. You know, Josh Steele, yeah. Paddy at Wang. They had yeah. Abdul Mohammed and they had um, Quinn Cooper. Yeah, and this year, you know, they don't, and so that's a problem because when you don't have Andrew Lawrence, then you're shot, and you've only got the two little guards. Your shot creation is going to be is going to struggle. And yeah. I thought that's what they struggled. Yeah. Now, the other thing about this game where I thought it turned a little bit was at the beginning of the third quarter. Leicester's bench really put the the um the clamps on the Leicester's starters put the clamps on Guildford. On oh, sorry, I thought Lloyd was a little bit conservative with his subs because he subbed James out at the seven. Joint James had seventeen points in the first half, mm. right? He played eight minutes in the second half. They lost by ten. He ended up with four fouls. Mm -hmm. He subbed out, uh, and he's a young, new, new guy, so maybe he doesn't know what he's got with him. Doesn't know if he can trust him to play through fouls. But he subbed him out at the seven minute mark when he got his third foul in the third quarter. He missed the next seven minutes. He came back and being in the fourth quarter, picked up his fourth foul within a couple of minutes. Subbed out, came back with three minutes to go, and they're down by eight or ten. Mm -hmm. Um, got out of rhythm. And the the down the, I I get the the logic of that you want to protect him etc. But also you took minutes out of his you took minutes out of the guy who was effectively yeah, going to be the guy winning the game. And downside to that was, um, what's coming off the bench wasn't as impactful. Mm. You know, so it wasn't like you were replacing a like with like. Mm. You, you, if you're Rob, you're replacing Thompson with Shelton, then you're getting the same type of energy and that type of stuff. Yeah, different. You know, they didn't have anybody who could do what James was doing. And in, in reality, they don't. Hunt and James are a totally different kind of roster fit. So I thought he's too conservative with that. I thought he could have got back, got him back in the game earlier. He may as well foul if he fouls out, he fouls out. Um, but Leicester just got better shots in the fourth quarter, and it's probably in the third quarter as well. Um I like the I like the group that they've got. Um you can see where the issues might come with as I say a little bit with athleticism. Shot creation. It wouldn't surprise me to see him put Johnson in the starting lineup actually and bring Wright off the bench. Um, but we'll see. Just mm. just because I think Wright would be an absolute sniper off the bench. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah off yeah. the bench. Uh, Johnson's got a little bit more pop off the dribble. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, seventy-five, eighty-seven was the final score. By the way, didn't didn't give that. Uh, and Is and that for the Rob... reds or the greens. Oh, I don't know. And. Uh... For Rob Hunt, that's one game in a row that Leicester have won against the 89ers. Uh, so let's come to Sunday. <laughs> he loves that start. Let's come to Sunday. Uh, Bristol Flyers 108, London Lions 85. So Bristol overturning the aggregate and by doing so, winning the head to head and becoming their first team to book their spot in the semi final. As a result of that, yeah, a team with two losses qualifies before a team with none. That's great, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, what a world! Yeah, <laughs> what a world! Um, yeah, what was that thirty-six point swing? 
Um, yeah, it was a lot. No, nothing really in the first quarter. Nothing in the first 15 minutes of the game of this, really, Dave. <laughs> well, it was kind of Bristol, but Bristol, there was nothing in it, but Bristol were playing with a fair wind, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, and, and they were playing but like a team who just kind of thought themselves, you didn't get our best last week no, <laughs> on no. Thursday, you know, so we're going to give you our best today. And when Bristol makes shots, you know, they're going to be a tough team. Um, London, with the opposite, they were playing like a team, oh, hang on, we cracked it. I thought. I mean, not, not it's not tangible like that. They're not, they're not, they're not trying hard, but I thought the intensity of Bristol in this game compared to the intensity of Bristol in the last game. Um, and obviously combined with the gym as well. And the fans in there um, was just different level. And, and it takes the team has to kind of respond to that or, or die. Um, London are still finding their way with their bench, obviously, without rise and massive hole. Um, Adebayo is interesting. Young, again, British kid. He's playing a lot of defence, you can see. Just the question for him is how much is he going to be able to score? You know, that's That's really it. Um, but he's he appears to belong on the court. Goodwin is also actually really interesting. I, I, I kind of I, I get kind of a warm feeling in my heart when when I see a, a young kid who shoots the ball and makes a shot and doesn't react. Oh, you know, okay. Doesn't, okay. Does the kind of it's his job, but you know, yeah, it's my job. I'm going about the next one. Yeah. And Goodwin, the problem, and um, what? Um. So he, he's interesting as well. Um. But. You know, you you don't see much which is outstanding in London. They probably, but, but then again, Rye makes everybody better. So yeah, yeah, probably yeah. give them, you've got to give them a chance to get to get there. Um, and then yeah, well, a nice little scuffle at half time, which sadly we missed. Yeah, um, we yeah. Don't quite know what happens. Any 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 info? No, I don't know. The the there was just before we get there is an eight zero run early in the second quarter and a 10 run late uh and then bristol were ahead am i allowed to say on aggregate were they, were they yeah ahead? yeah absolutely yes uh yeah and then there was obviously something but i'm not sure what i haven't heard i haven't had any intel to it no something happened bozic and bozic was communicating in croatian while gavin williams was talking to him in welsh so mm. serbian sorry serbian my fault serbian, yeah, um, no, gavin was in welsh, so that must have been a meeting of minds um what was really nice was the fact that i thought um the way Gavin was pointing, it was like he was offering him outside. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's just so you know, when you go through those doors in Bristol, it really is very tight. Mm. You know, you're, you're almost the locker rooms are, um, that are very close in the corridors, you only kind of fit two people in. So, you know, it's not the best place to have a kind of a scouse and hawk situation, yeah, 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 anything like that, you know. Um, that's a dated reference for is, the old times. I'm not even going to explain. No. And um, but they are still playing basketball. You didn't, you didn't go with buckets, so you could have gone with buckets. More Teddy more. buckets, yeah. yeah. Well, I tell you, actually went into the locker room, well, yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Um, allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, they are still actually playing at shows where that happened. Birmingham are playing there at the moment. Charles is a coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been, I've been there quite a few times in recent yeah, years. It's okay. much nicer than it used to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um. So yeah, so, so that was quite tight. So there was obviously something brewing in the game, and obviously yeah. when you play each other three days apart, there is going to be something brewing. Yeah. And I mean, what we did see a clip on the um on kind of the replay was kind of Ovi running back in, uh, running back into the um gym with a degree of purpose, mm. having left the gym at half time. So that something happened. Um, oh, but it's probably just stupid words, and we're all exaggerating because there's not been yeah. much outrage. Yeah. And then in the third quarter, Bristol kind of took over. Yeah, and once they got twenty up, they always looked like they'd they'd stay at least twelve up, uh, and therefore do what they needed to do. Uh, but what I was really, for... what, sorry, I was saying, what I was really interested in was um, Tennyson. Mm. Right? Tennyson, obviously uh, Alfred Lord, as we're all going to know. <laughs> Indeed. That um, that's a, you get poetry in this. Yeah, story, yeah. You know, I mean, it's impressive. all good stuff. It's all good stuff. Um, no, but Tennyson um, uh, probably. Didn't do much poetry in college, I would guess. Um, he's interesting because he it's the second game, the first game in the game against um sorry, they put Chelovinskis on him at the end. And he just looked at him and thought, I'm going at you. Mm. In this game, they made kind of the mistake of putting Goodwin on him. Mm. And he looked at Goodwin and he said, Right, I'm going at you. Mm. You know, and it's almost like he's saying, This is my time, you know. He, he seems to have very um he knows what he's meant to do and when he's meant to do it, which is mm. basically score. But he, when he sees somebody he thinks he's going at, yeah, yeah, he's a guy that you would have to be kind of, you'd have to wear him down, you'd have to frustrate him because he's going to get his shots up. So 
you've got to try and limit the quality of his shots, which means you've got to have one of your better. I think you've got to have one of your better defenders on at all times, mm. um, because you've got to try and frustrate him into shooting bad shots. Uh, so he, that was that was interesting for me, just seeing the, the mindset of uh, you know a young player in the league ready to take over, and he did. Yeah. Uh, so came out with interesting with five of seven unanswered points, get it to 94, 95, 81 with 3.15 to go. Obviously, if London got it under uh, 12, it, it, would, it would give them a chance. Uh, Sheffield then hit a three, stole the ball from Soko, ran it back for a saw, score. Soko chased him down, shoved him in the back, initially called an unsportsmanlike. There's a bit of a hoo-ha. Referees got together disqualified him looked like a DQ when I saw it first time and I was I actually I tweeted after the unsport- I actually it. tweeted after the unsports night call but before the DQ call mm. that looked like a DQ to me. Yeah. I'm glad they got round to it. Yeah, it's unjustifiable. Mm. Just, you cannot you cannot do that. I mean it wasn't that he pushed him in as he was going up, he pushed him literally as he's under the basket. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's sometimes where you're close behind and you're riding somebody and just as they're taking off, they get a little nudge. Mm. But this was like Hoosiers, you know, he was like he's straight into the glass cabinet, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, and in that gym with people on the sideline, yeah, yeah. When they're better, you know, you just can't. That's just a it's an inexcusable lack of discipline. But the reality of it is it had been triggered earlier on. We always yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a reason, right? And whether it's by talking or whether it's what happened at half time, whether it's his frustration or whatever. And obviously he's just turned the ball over as well. Yeah. He just turned the ball over, yeah. but you know, it's still things you don't do. No, yeah, 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 yeah. You know that, I know yeah, that. You do yeah, not do yeah. that type of stuff in a gym, like in any gym, but particularly in that gym. And um, yeah, they're, I mean, they're going to they're probably lose them for a game, but they won't matter because they're not going to qualify. So mm. they worry. Well, we'll we, at least we'll learn what the process is. Give them a some, if somebody's TV written it, yeah, yeah I assume hopefully. somebody's already written the process. Yeah. Give him a chance to do another TV show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen the last one, to be honest with you. No. Um, Sherfield, 26 points, 8 of 9 shooting, 4 of 5 from 3. Tennyson, 26 points, 11 of 16 shooting. Lewis, 17. That Bristol, Bristol was 62% from the floor and 11 of 21 from three-point range. Yeah, and then and that's the gym that they're in, but they got going yeah. in. You know, when yeah. you get going early, and Sherfield is a guy who appears to be very um streaky looking at him, he can he can make him, he can miss him. But when he got going, he's athletic, he's he's aggressive, and they just had the wind in their sails the whole game and London didn't weren't able to do anything to kind of take the wind out of their yeah. sails. Uh Delair twenty two point seven rebounds, Taylor fifteen point six assists, Brisker and Soko both twelve. Uh Sheffield Sharks 89, Manchester Basketball 77. Mackay Ashton Langford in for Manchester. What's the beginning of this game broadcast? I didn't see it. I mean, I caught it. It came on after about five minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On catch up. It so in that there. time, Junior Maddow appears to have got injured because he only played. Something happened because he only played a couple of minutes, but yeah. I couldn't see what happened because it. It wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't see very many of the uh, five threes. Poor old Drake Jeffries. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well... <laughs> I've disappeared. I only saw one, I think, of the first five threes that he made in seven. Well, isn't it? But it will be in the memories of the 1500 or so people yeah. who were there. And in yeah. 30 years' time, you can tell everybody that yeah, they were all with people draped all over them from 35 feet on the logo. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sheffield were 26 15 ahead at the. Uh, at the end of the fifth one there. So they were seemingly in command, 32-18 with a minute to go in the fourth quarter, and then they didn't score for the next six minutes, and Manchester brought it down to a four-point game. Yeah, there's still a little bit there's still a little bit of a work in progress, Sheffield, in relation to um, their offensive consistency, I think. Um, Manchester just have a lot of talent, but I had no clue on how to use it. Ashton Langford again is... Going to be a talented player. I quite like what I saw of him in this, in this game. But you, you've got to find a way of working together. I think they're not even close at the moment, from what I can see. Um, not much. This you don't know whose team it is. There's not much discipline to it at at this point in time, and they're gonna to have to they have to get it sorted. Mm. You know, because no, no one's gonna no one's gonna blame him for being one and seven or zero and eight in the trophy. Yeah, at the end of if it's start really the starting yeah. the league, zero and three or zero and four, then that's you yeah. know then then that's not acceptable on the 
the budget that they've got on the, on the on the level sorry the level of players that they've got I don't yeah, know yeah. It's budget but the level of players that they've got um and the the resumes you know so um they're gonna have to find ways of making it work and there's no easy options in this league mm. they kind of all go to Leeds and get a win it's not gonna happen yeah yeah yeah, um, let, let Laska run up and down for twenty yeah, minutes without uh, doing anything. Cardio, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, it, on that floor, I tell you something. On that floor, my yeah. thought, if it, I think it was a home game, but if it had been at Leeds, my only thought would be to get him out to stop him hurting something. Yeah, um, which is basically the last five years of Drew. Fab didn't play. I think it was a wife. Fab, Fab played yeah, no exactly. minutes. So, yeah. yeah, well, the last um, five years of Drew's career was all about just basically getting him out a minute before he got injured. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sheffield with the last seven points of the first half. Great three on the buzzer by Groves, by the way. Uh, to make yeah, it there's a few of them. Points. I mean, there was a guy, um, Blake Bowman made one on the chop top buzzer as well, didn't he? Mm. And sometimes, you know, if you've got an option but to shoot it, it goes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sharks led by as many as 26 early third quarter. Manchester, one of your uh, fake comebacks, they for sure, oh, like God, to say. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I think they got um, it to nine, but no, there was only ever one winner, yeah, because they started playing a little bit freer. Sheffield loosened up just a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm still giving Manchester time, but I'm, they're not on an endless kind of piece of string, you know. There's you would like to have seen a little bit more than you have at the moment. I think the best, you know, if they've got the time, I mean, they're going to have to talk, if they're going to keep Maddo and Ashton Langford and Lewis and John, then there are going to be some issues. I thought they were best in this game when Carey was playing. and He's mm. the least heralded of any of them. Mm. You know, because his energy and, and his awareness and his up and downness of the game, I thought he was more of a facilitator, a connector than the rest of them. Um, Del Pesh as well, mm. you know. So Del Pesh was impactful as well. But the other guys, they're gonna have to prove something. You know, your, your resume doesn't get you anywhere. Mm. And so Ko yeah. and Ko and Moore and Mitchell. and Mitchell from Australia, they're gonna, you know, mm. you know, you know you're playing for you're playing for a winning team and winning making mm. winning plays, or you're playing for a losing team. Mm. At the moment, they're playing for a losing team. So, um, th there's some decisions to be made there. I think. Mm. Uh, Jeffrey, 6 of 11 for 3, 21 points. Chapman, 21 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. Nixon, 18 points, 16 points, and 8 rebounds. Sorry. Uh, no, okay. the they didn't, yeah. you didn't get the impression that Manchester respected Sheffield the scorers. No. Uh, particularly Jeffrey's. I mean, I didn't see the shots, he, the shots he got, but, you know, Jeffrey's is a shooter. You know? mm. And if you're not going to take away that, make that, if you're going to give him 11 three point attempts in 30 minutes for a start, mm. then you're asking for trouble. Yeah. Uh, KO 13, Mitchell 12.6 rebounds, Lewis, Ashton, Langford, John 10. Sounds like a list. Sounds a like a hospital, in the hospital, doesn't it? Yeah, hospital, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, so let's come to the final game of the weekend Cheshire Phoenix 95, Caledonia Gladiators 74. Dave, I said earlier, I just need to just clarify something. I said earlier that I was at the end of my tether and yeah. uh, and I'm still at the end of my tether. In between that, what's the opposite end of when do you uh, what do you go back with the tether bit? Yeah, beginning of your tether. Yeah, begin I was at, I was at the beginning in between. I had a very you give it a long a long leash. No, a very heartwarming moment I want to share with you, Dave, because I know you like heartwarming moments. This only works on YouTube. I'm sorry for those listening by audio. I got this lovely little bag here and this wonderful little poem here written written to me with chocolate bars and sweets as like this sort of like punchline thing from oh from Oliver uh, Oliver Purdy and his family uh, sort of just generally welcoming me oh. and it's got a little basketball in. To well, the you Knicks. meet a Cheshire. Yeah, yeah. To the, to but, the what, Do I need to get Mark Knox out and start playing local you, hero here? You, or mate, you or need to do something. Uh, so yeah, I've got this little bag of chocolates and sweets from this from this young Cheshire Knicks fans. It was very heartwarming. I was I'll tell you super... something. They know how to buy the. They get them buying well, influence early down I'm, there. I'm, 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 I'm totally. I'll tell you, bored Mike Burton, that'll be one of Mike Burton's school kids, right? Yeah, well, he sent them there. He, Mike Burton's bought them for you. He sent them there. Keep them sweet for us. Um, no, yeah. that's, that is lovely. Um, it's lovely. You know, it's you know, it's interesting. Actually, it's fun because you know. Chester is always, as you know as well as I do, mm. when they're in the North Gate before now, for the past yeah. probably since the mid nineties, when they when they they came into the league and they, the first couple of years, they 
just played British guys and they got absolutely hammered. Yeah. And then when they started recruiting cleverer than everybody else and beating people with six and seven players, you know, Cheshire's has always had that little kind of chip in chip on the shoulder in relation to little kind of little city, little town. Mm. Now I'm not knocking Cheshire, but Chester or Ellesmere Port or whatever, but they've always kind of I've always been the most welcoming people as well. Yeah, I don't, yeah, don't get yeah. me wrong. Incredibly yeah, yeah. welcoming. In fact, I saw a couple of I'll give them a shout out as well after the game on Friday night. I saw a couple of Cheshire fans who complimented you on the broadcast and said mm. very little to me. Um <laughs> but seeing how much they like to listen to what we talked about, which, which rather befuddled me as well. Um so yeah, always incredibly welcoming. Um mm. but always kind of that they've always had that kind of punchers mentality. Mm. And um you know, and that kind of small town kind of club environment. So mm. I'm not, not, I'm not saying this is a detriment. So that type of thing you talk about mm. there mm. is that type of thing, that kind of mm. community thing, which is really important. And it's easier to be like that. In, in, I'm just in, saying, next time I'm in the Virtue Motors Arena, Dave. Yeah, and bugger off that's, me. That's the level I'm expecting. Yeah, yeah, and bugger off me. But it, but it's it's harder to be that in London. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose, you know, I suppose, where I suppose. A, what I'm talking about is there's a degree of personality, and that can actually drive the team, that can drive the club. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I'm not just kind of making a trying to make a point about nothing. It, it all everything we do, hopefully, talk about on this stuff mm. comes down to does it help you or does it hurt you? Yeah, yeah. Like, even stuff like that, that can help. And well, if you if you follow it back, you need in order to survive in British basketball, and you'll 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 find this littered in most uh places. Uh, over the 50, 60 years of top flight British basketball is you need people in order to survive at some point. And obviously the Phoenix rose from the ashes uh, of the Jets and they couldn't have done that without the community around the club who wouldn't give up on it. You know, obviously you're going to have your Mike Burtons and your important people along yeah. the way uh, sort of driving it, but without everything else and without all of the volunteers and all of that that's sort of the lifeblood of the sport in and it country. does make a difference mm. you know and it, why does it make a difference maybe it makes a difference as to whether Larry Austin wants to go back yeah yeah yeah. maybe yeah. it makes a difference as to whether Cameron Christian stays for another mm. year mm. maybe it makes I know it does make a difference from personal experience when you have fans who've travelled 150 miles to go and watch you play yeah you know yeah, and yeah. we had the U there and, and those guys behind yeah, us yeah. were part of it at one time but it makes a massive difference. It doesn't not not so much to the actually to, to, to people like myself, the coaches, but to the players. Mm. You know, we have, you know fans come and giving the players gift packs after an away game. Mm. You know, yeah, yeah. The players that is a that yeah that yeah feeling of being welcome. Yeah, is that the other is thing? A massive, you hear it's a massive thing. It, being it, invited in for Sunday lunch and stuff yeah. like that for somebody who's on their own and all of those sorts. Yeah, of and obviously, as you're going to get, you're going to get to Europe Cup level in the London guys. So it's not yeah, going to yeah. be the same because no. you know once you're into that level. But if you're a young pro, you're making your way in the game. You're not earning mm. a tremendous amount of money. You're in a foreign country. Mm. You know, um, so much of your performance is mental. Mm. Yeah, so much yeah. of your performance is whether you're ready and whether you're locked. You know, I hate the phrase locked in, but whether you're aware of environment, aware of circumstance, yeah, yeah. aware of points of difference, aware of um, referees, yeah. you know, whether you're going to put the extra bit of mental preparation into being ready for each and every game. And, you know, again, the advantage of being in a team that we, we had periods of time whereby we were like that. Mm. You learn how much it takes mm. and you know when it's not there. Mm. So, you know, and, and part of that is having the people who follow you around and the people who do nice things like that will be, mm. I think I'd have given it one of the players if I was that young mm. kid, mm. I wouldn't have wasted it on you. Or perhaps, <laughs> better, or perhaps even better, you could have kind of coloured in one side red and one side green and that's the yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So let's get back to the game. Thank you very much uh, to the Birdie family. My sympathies uh, now over, by the way. Yeah, you, you yeah, yeah. You've had your yeah. half an hour. The uh, the the Christian was out with a wrist injury. They they were testing him beforehand, but he wasn't uh, good to go. Uh, obviously, no Ali Hodgkins and Whelan uh, still. So Eitel Rock was into the uh, starting five for Cheshire, and and he certainly made the most of it. Cheshire in a flow early on, threes to the rim. Yeah, the, I mean, I like I like the stuff. move to put him in. I mean, Ben wasn't there on Friday night, so Larry Larry started. I like the move to bring to to bring him in because. He's the one guy who hasn't really played much for them this year. So, you know, when you know he can play, um, because we've seen it in Sheffield last year, but his minutes have been a bit down this year. So and I do think Austin is an absolute just absolutely nailed on to 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 be a 
to be a, a activator from the bench. I think it's just a fantastic role for him in that team. So I like that move. Um, and it gives him a shooter because Outer Rock is a shooter, whereas Austin, as I say, he made a couple, but he isn't a shooter. Um, but they do have, they do have, for all we talk about, all the positives about Cheshire, they do have gaps. They do have little dry spells. They do have times when the defense kind of drops a little bit, where their energy drops a little bit. But what the, the thing about them is, is that it doesn't sustain. Yeah. Because they're, they're able to kind of almost inject themselves, re inject themselves and go again. So the Caledonia were coming back and making and the guys were making the plays and they were getting the shots they meant to get. And Stuckman was knocking down shots and Malcolm was playing with energy and all that stuff. And um, you know, thinking, oh, Cheshire are going to put this away. You assume they're going to put it away, but you, you were never quite sure. But we know that at the moment, that Caledonia's game basically lasts for about 27 minutes. Mm. After well, that. I was I was a bit worried for them earlier than that when they were 13, 30 to seventeen down at the end of the first quarter, but they they just hung on in there really, and I thought well, Malcolm they are a disciplined has... group, and they're not going to give up sixty five and many yeah, halves against teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Cheshire are going to ride the wave, but Caledonia are going to stick at what they're doing. And defensively, they are big, they have good size, and they're disciplined and diligent. They're not a, they're not a bad defensive team. Mm. Their problems are at the other end of the, they, they, they struggle to stay in front of people. Which means they foul too much, but outside of that, you know that they're, they're, they're quite well coached down there. They're doing the things I'm meant to do. The struggle is not turning the ball over and getting good shots at the other yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Malcolm and Jimenez cut it to to a single basket. Uh, scores retired in the third quarter. Then you got a white three. You've got the four and the five out running the break. Chester with nine points without reply. And you talk about their spurtability earlier. Fifty eight. 49 ahead but but again the stick to itiveness of Caledonia impressed me they just they kept going eventually I mean Cheshire blew the doors off in the yeah I mean poor, poor Jimenez was getting whacked there left yeah. and center, wasn't he yeah I mean but he stuck at it and he, you know he battled him through and all of that stuff um they did but as I say you know one turnover to one assist is just not a ratio that's going to win you many games no, no. Um, and the biggest thing I thought and I was surprised at this I'll be honest I was watching it you know, the, the doors came off at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Yeah. Right? It was a four-point game, and it became yeah. a 17 or a 20-point game. 19 of the first 20 points Cheshire right. scored. And um, just like in overtime last week at Sheffield, when they couldn't score, yeah. they couldn't know, the boss wasn't on the court. Yeah. Now, the boss wasn't playing at the level that he played on Friday night. He may have been hurt again, but he came back in at the six-minute mark. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, what? what? Why? Why, why, why is it going? You, know, you, you haven't won a game since... You know, for two weeks, you're in a horrible run. You've got a chance of a massive motivating kind of thingy. You know, you can't protect these guys forever. This is the guy you saw last week, but then when he wasn't on the court, you're playing with Hill and then four guys who are basically forwards playing, and you couldn't get a shot against Sheffield. Mm. And the same thing happened today. And and, and I was like, why would you bring him back in when you're down 20? Mm. You know, why isn't he on the court at the beginning? It is... For all the game, my, my, when I was on it again, not to, when I was doing this, um, the danger time in my mind in every game, particularly when you were close in the game or in the lead or heavily in the lead in the game, it's the minute before the end of the third quarter and the three minutes afterwards, mm. right? If you, the difference in the game can be done with seven minutes to go. If you're up 10 going into that, and you come and you and you you hold it to the end of the third quarter, and they don't get any, any momentum because they want momentum coming in the fourth quarter. And then you put it up, and you put it away, and you win the first three minutes, and you end up up fifteen or sixteen. The other team cracks. Mm. Occasionally they'll come back, but very rare. It's mm. too late. And having your best guys on the court at the beginning of the fourth quarter, for me, it's just, in a game that when you're as desperate for a win as they are, mm. I just thought it was absolutely um, critical. The other interesting. Um, Sidebar of this game was again, it's you know, teams are really struggling to play big guys against Cheshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dalpesh couldn't play against Cheshire. Yeah. He, he fouled, right? Hughes, Hughes they eight minutes the in this game. Yeah. yeah, you know, so they are bending teams to their will. Yeah, right, because they're getting more productivity out of their bigs. In this game, it was Teague as mm. opposed to um, White, yeah. with his ability to drive and knock down the odd shot and you know, run the floor as well, right? Um, who was basically resulted in Hughes not, not being on the court. Yeah. You know, they haven't got so they haven't to play Barnes at the five, which may be a slightly better look for them, but they still don't have that um 
that level of garden for a team that had you know finished up with Quadi Green last year, mm. had Bothwell, Whelan, you know, it's a pretty a, a pretty talented group, right? At the moment, you got poor Isaiah Hill, who's basically having to do most of it on its own. Mm. Tell him and fighting through nosebleeds and wax and mm. wallops. Mm. And Patrick really, no doubt, desperate to play. And Ian DeBose struggling and to be consistent coming back with injury. Mm. They're nowhere near. Mm. Um, but there's enough there. And I don't know how they... I don't know if they can continue to... I don't know if mentally they can survive another three weeks of fever. Mm. Yeah. You know, the real thing for... You know, mentally, are they going to be... Are they going to be... Are they going to be done? They've been in since the beginning of August. Yeah. The only team they've beaten is Manchester. They really aren't the team. They're a collection of individuals. Um, they're going to get a couple more whackings in the next few weeks in Europe. They're, they're now they've only got one. Obviously, uh, well, the, the, the last time out, man, you didn't need it. They'd already qualified. Yeah, yeah. It I've was seen actually, seen well, it doesn't matter. It, but yeah. avoidance of doubt, I suppose, an abundance of caution. Yeah, yeah. Um, give them credit. Um, but such as the head-to-head -head that Cheshire and Caledonia couldn't do it, and Cheshire have got the head-to-head -head on Sheffield and Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. And um, so with that win, I think I've, I, I've got the. Permutations, I'll give them yeah, a second. Right, I'll let you do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, yeah it, it took till 2.42 to go in the quarter that Caledonia got their first field goal. Young Jamie oh, Adair, 17-year-old off the bench yeah. at a three. Good job, young man. You know, his, and, and that's really quite appropriate given given the theme of this show. Jamie Adair? Red. Red Adair. Oh, dear. There we go. Well, you can see, you see he was putting out a few fires, couldn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Holden 20 and 10, Idle Rock with 19, Teague 18 points. It was 56 22 points in the paint and 17 points off uh turnovers for Cheshire. Well, uh, that's seven offensive rebounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. He scores, he scores off them, yeah. Stuckman 18, Hill 13, Malcolm uh 12.7 rebounds, 38% from the floor, hmm. and turnovers, yeah. So let's go to the tables as they stand. In the north, Cheshire Phoenix 5 and 1, Sheffield and Newcastle both 4 and 2, Caledonia 2 and 5 and Manchester 0 oh and 5. So Manchester are out, Caledonia are out, yeah. Cheshire are through because Sheffield still have to play Newcastle so only one of them can get to 5 and as you say Cheshire have the head to head with both of them so it doesn't matter which. Uh if Newcastle beat Sheffield, they'll go through. If Sheffield beat Newcastle by more than five points, they'll go through. Yeah. If Sheffield win by less than five points against Newcastle, they need either to win their last game or Newcastle to lose uh, their last game. Uh, both of them are playing Manchester. Uh, if Sheffield win by exactly five points... They have a 34-point advantage on the overall head-to-head -head yeah, points. Yeah, because Newcastle got blown out by Cheshire. Different, so yeah, so yeah, you would yeah. imagine Sheffield would be yeah, okay. It's in four or regard. less, basically. Um, Cheshire, just to finish it off, Cheshire needs one win to be top, and yeah. Sheffield and Newcastle need two wins and two Cheshire losses to be top. Cool. Ah, oh, well, be good. It should be a good game Friday night. Newcastle playing at home in Europe, so that really, they've really got no excuse because mm. they're playing at home on Tuesday this week. So it's a bit different playing Newcastle on Tuesday and Sheffield on Friday than playing in um, Slovakia on Wednesday and in, in Cheshire on Friday. Uh, so it should be a good game. We'll see. So I'll say there's still some roster stuff that I'm interested to see what's going on. It is kind of a little bit like the... Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit before the Lord Mayor's show as opposed to after it. You know, at the moment, we're just trying to figure out what everyone's going to be like when the league starts, to be honest. Which is a bit weird. And I'm not uh, sure if we're still going to enjoy the extra two, two no. final games in the middle of their European situation. No. Um, but, but you'd rather you think they could win the competition, couldn't they? So well, I guess well, they, yeah. not, the, not the past 10 years, then they go back. Well, maybe. Uh, in oh, the sorry, south, still come on, win one, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the south, uh, do you know the uh, what are they issue our plates with all the dots on it? I've worked yeah. that out now as to what the line is saying, the numbers are saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, L Bristol are through, and one of sorry or London are out, but we don't know which. Uh, Leicester needs one win to be well, if through. one of them are out, but you don't know which, then neither of them are then out. Then neither of them, neither are them out, yeah, neither okay. of them are out, they'll both be out. Yeah, I'm point. still listening. Uh, Leicester needs one win to be through, and that would put Surrey and London out. Yeah, uh, Bristol. Yeah, need to beat Leicester and Leicester lose all three games to be top or 
beat Leicester by 23 plus and Leicester wins only one of Surrey against or uh, Surrey and London in their last two games. If Bristol wins by exactly 22 points, uh, Leicester would be behind by seven on the overall points difference. And obviously they would have to win one and lose one. So it's hard to guess which way that might go. Right. But Leicester's going to win. So that's just Leicester will probably win uh, in, in the red green game on uh, Wednesday. No, it'll be black. It'll be black. It'll be black. Right. We're done. We are done. Yeah, we are done. And we will be on the lookout. I'm going to, I'm going to start following some colorblind organizations to there make sure I'm across all, all across this stuff. Well, they, they do helpfully, uh, from time to time, um, publish uh like photos and stuff like that so when when you when wales versus ireland rugby is on they oh. publish a sort of uh a photoshopped version so that color normies can see what we see oh, cool. so so you can you you can, you can called live, normal. live our live our pain and, never been called uh, normal oh, yeah, yes. yeah yeah um well dave and i will be back we're gonna we're gonna do it next sunday dave yeah, I, I'm I'm doing I'm doing Leicester London, but we'll, I'll get back in time to cool. to do it. We'll do it next Sunday. We we need we need to have at least one Sunday night breakdown on a need Sunday. To yeah, we need, we need to retain the integrity of the trademark. So. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so on that, we will. I'm going to go have a lie down and uh, and uh, you need one. Yeah, cough up a bit more. Uh, and then yeah, yeah, just rest. Uh, so. Uh, We'll see you next week. Do it all again. But for this now, week, actually, but this week, yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye, Bye. everybody. <laughs>